All right, guys. Season three, episode six, titled Scar Tissue. I think we decided youngest to oldest. So, Brian, <laughs> what do you do? Go. Yeah. So right off the bat, episode six, Scar Tissue. Great name. It's a Red Hot Chili Peppers song. So mm -hmm. starting yes, off is. on the right foot, but not not necessarily the best episode of the series. I don't think there were any jaw dropping moments. Maybe you guys can correct me one or two. I was just like, oh, wow, that's that's some really good stuff. But I think there was a lot of plot progression for like several several of our characters, which I think was nice. All the Jade and Tabby conversations were great. Uh, I can't forget to mention that Jim was off screen at the lake for most of the episode. So that was kind of a plus. I think I just needed a Jim break, but Victor's dad and Victor, you know, they not only had a couple conversations that are long past due, but they also went to the cave. I think that was great. Finally, some progression on the Elgin stuff. And we all knew that that camera was going to come back into play and boy did it. And also some progression on the Fatima front. So, like not like I said, a lot of jaw dropping moments, but there was some really nice progression and I was very interested in how everything was progressing. So mm -hmm. I, I would say it was a good a good episode to kind of push us along to the end of this season, which I have really high hopes for because I think we need a great ending to this season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with everything you said. I think that it was better than the last episode and but you're also right like this isn't going to be an episode that i'm just i find myself thinking about constantly but you're right a lot of the uh plot lines are moving and i was pretty happy that jim they heard you man they went right back to jasper victor was not holding that off for too long so that was good because yep, that yep, seems yep. like i don't want to say end game things but that is going to be related to the broader story so like it's going to be good to see whatever victor discovers with jasper and that little tea party setup that it seemed, I think that's where he overheard Christopher at one time. I could be wrong about that, though. We can talk about that later. Yeah, it, it was yeah. a, it was in the house. Maybe it, either it way, it's, setting. Yeah, yeah. It seemed it seemed to look different. Um, so yeah, Jay Jay was making moves and he's working with Ethan now. Like you're gonna bring that little kid in to mess with the puzzle. He's gonna come to a, some sort of realization next episode. That's gonna be a trigger yeah. for Jade. So that's gonna be something for us to look forward to. Tabby was all over the place. Um, and. Yeah, so I don't really have anything. I don't think she she's like dealing with the stress of the town hall, which we kind of talked to death <laughs> last podcast episode. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, besides that, like no Sarah sighting. Um, Ellis was not taking the route that you predicted, Jimmy, where you, yeah, you I, no. I thought it was kind of. Yeah, right. We had the conversation. Yeah. You're like, Ellis is probably going to be the reason that nobody finds out. But the first thing he says out of his mouth is we got to tell people, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. uh, that yep. played out in a really fun way with the ultrasound. Um, but yeah, I don't really have anything that stuck out as like the best scene of the episode. Just a couple of moving parts and, and we're getting there. And then so we have four left. A lot of con right. Ten, not nine, right? Ten. Yep. Ten. Yeah. yeah so we got a lot of content good. left. So looking forward to it. Kathleen. Jasper was sitting at that table like a mob boss. That's mm -hmm. the, he's the man. He's the man of he Trump. He is the boss, dude. Um, yeah, I think my favorite thing was the Fatima reveal that they can't see whatever's happening in the ultrasound, whether it's is it not there in general? Can the ultrasound just not pick it up? What other crazy things could it be? Love that. I think that's the most interesting thing it could be versus like doing the ultrasound and it'd be like, like a monster's in there, you know, that's like <laughs> the, alien. It's the most interesting thing that could have been, even if it was a normal ultrasound, we would still be saying, okay, well, it just, this monster looks like a normal baby. So I thought that mm -hmm. was really interesting. I loved that reveal. Um, I love the tabby reveal that she's been seeing these things since she was a kid as well. It kind of puts her in the same wavelength and like, playing field is Miranda. That's her name, right? Victor's mom. Yep. yep, yep. Um, and like Miranda isn't in, like incredibly more important than Tabby. Like each chosen one yeah. is just as important mm -hmm. as the other. They just, baby. you just don't know what you're seeing until you realize what you're seeing. Like, you know what I mean? Like I thought that yeah, was really you're just having a nightmare. Well. Yeah. Yeah. The three red rocks. It's good. But yeah, Luke, I thought the same thing about Ethan. I wanted, I thought Ethan was going to walk right in, see the patterns. And like, as a little kid, just being like, well, it's this. And mm -hmm. yeah. Boom, yeah. Like brain, brain explodes. He'll, he'll do something. Literally like that. the Kramanaki. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. 
Yeah, I thought it was a great episode. I thought that it did move the plot forward. There were a lot of reveals. I think that the funny thing about a lot of the reveals are that we were expecting them, so they weren't like holy shit reveals. Mm -hmm. The photo to a lot of casual viewers, and I don't say that like in a mean way. I'm just saying to people that didn't guess it, they probably were like, holy shit. You know, we're not confirmed here yet, but we have the photo maybe saying Fatima is the kimono scary lady, Fantima. And also with the reveal with there being no baby in the uterus, Kathleen, that's actually very interesting that you were saying that maybe it is actually a monster baby and they can't see it and they're not picking it up because I took that as confirmation as she's turning into a monster straight up. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I like that you're saying that. So it still leaves it up in the air. But again, I agree. I thought that was a good reveal, even though, again, we were we were kind of guessing that. And there's a lot of stuff to talk about with this bottle tree. There's a lot of theories, but Let's just get into it. I, I don't want to. One yeah, question. I, I just want to. I just want to yeah. throw it out there because I am forgetting myself. Why did she think she was pregnant? Was it just the morning sickness? She was late, and yeah, she's probably missed her period. Yeah, yeah, she was okay, late because I can't. She just... The only reason I asked that is because, like, why? Like, she's so confident that and she's she pregnant. Took the test. And she took the test. I that's, was going to say, was... Christy like confirmed it medically. Yeah, hey, okay, that's okay, what cool. I was missing too, Luke. I was thinking yeah. the same thing. But I was like, why would you even think you're pregnant then? But that makes sense. That makes a ton of sense. There was definitely a reason why we were sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So the weird thing about that whole scenario was that it was around the same exact time that Smiley gets killed, right? But there's also, because it's around that same time, it's also around the same time where Boyd has the worms or virus parasite in him, uses it to kill Smiley. But also people were wondering if he could still have the parasites in him. It's not confirmation that just because you gave it to Smiley means it's actually gone, and then you give it mm -hmm. to Ellis, and then they kind of do the bangity-bang, and then they have a baby, and she gets pregnant, and it could be a monster because of that, but that doesn't work because she asked for the pregnancy test already at almost that exact time. She asked okay. around the transfusion for Ellis happening, so she would have already been pregnant pregnant at that time so you know and from it could be anything they could just make her pregnant so but it, yeah. it it doesn't seem like it has anything to do with the the parasites worms or whatever you want to say from martin okay cool thanks for clearing that up um all right let's just throw out a random bucket right it doesn't matter of just characters and we'll just follow it through see where it takes us because i just want to throw forth let's just do victor and victor's dad stuff because one, it's so important. It probably has some theories connected to it, and it's pretty isolated. I don't think we need to loop in anything else besides them going to the caves, which I was super happy about. Like, we should be going down there every night, new experiment. Like, we're doing something <laughs> every day, not night. Uh, well, good tension. It wasn't like the greatest tension, but it was because we knew what was going to happen, right? Like, we had to plant the toy soldiers, and we get that reveal that Jasper's in there. We see one monster in monster form sleeping, and one that was mm. just already awake like waiting for them like this was part of the think, plan but she does threaten to say that we're going to keep you down here if you keep coming down here so jim you seem like you I think have that's very telling there was she not there no no she's there i think she's there and i think it's a very telling scenario for what we're watching when it comes to these monsters um let's let's break down everything we want to talk about and then when we get to that i'll talk about it i mean i'm ready oh, to figure out what okay, else happened yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. basically um, when it comes to Victor and his dad, I thought it was great. I, I, I do really think Victor's actor is doing great. And I think yeah. Victor's dad's actor is doing great as well. The emotion between the two of them, you know, Victor's dad just wanting to be around Victor and Victor being very reserved, but at the same time wanting to be around Henry as well and saying, Oh, you can come for a walk with me. And then, but he's again, it's just like Ethan. He's trying to keep him from the danger. He's not actually saying, I don't want to be with you. It's, Mm -hmm. I want you to be okay. So I don't want you to come with me. But of course, Victor, Victor and Henry go in together. Henry cracks me up because he's like, I'm coming in with you, son. And then like, he's just like, yo, man, let's go back. Well, I don't think we're doing the right thing here. And he keeps trying to yeah. go back. But mm -hmm. um, interesting that the first cavern where we saw Jasper the first time was completely empty. Okay. We know that it had mementos, in it before basically what it looked like in the second part when they get deeper mm -hmm. in is what it looked like except for the tea party being set up i keep thinking of the watchers and anybody who doesn't want any spoilers here just fast forward 30 seconds but basically in the watchers 
Are you guys okay with me saying it? Yeah. It's not yeah. okay. Yeah. In the watchers, basically, they had their it it actually doesn't even matter what they are. We don't even need to go there. But the monsters, quote unquote, live underground and keep mementos from the people that they kill that come into the forest, right? So it's very similar. And if people want us to get into that, I can in another time. I don't want to give too many spoilers in case people want to watch. But anyway, there's mementos. We find the cavern empty. We, we go deeper. Victor's dad, Henry, does not want to go deeper. But we do go deeper. And this is where I'm hoping it's purposely done here. And here's my problem. So... Are the rules being broken or are there no rules? Okay, so ever since we've been in the caverns during the day, we've seen that these monsters are monster form and sleeping. You can shake them and wake them up. You know, when Victor and Tabby were in there, they were kind of waking them up and they were stirring and things like that. I guess you can force that. But the fact that one was not in monster form waiting for them does that mean that these monsters don't actually slumber during the day and they really can do whatever the hell they want and they can come out during the day if they want? I thought it was very telling that she was this normal looking human version of the monsters and waiting for both of them. My only counter theory is it could just be sunlight and that's yeah. why they're in the cave the whole time and they do need some form of like vulnerable sleeping portion of the day. But as long as they're in the dark, like that chick might just not go out that night and that could be her turn to hibernate. And she was just like, "Ooh, I'm going to mess with Victor. So I'm going to be like <laughs> a person when he comes into a cave. I for me, it's just, you're absolutely right. There is a certain level of they are not explicitly playing by the rules of night. They are just vulnerable in the caves. I'm sorry. In the daytime, they're vulnerable in the caves no matter what. And at night, they come out. I think right. they do have some level of influence as to when they do. I have to imagine they they are abiding by that rule of they they have to have that slumber that hibernation at some point in like a 24 mm -hmm. hour period or something because otherwise why the hell would they be doing it but I, i'm starting to think it's sunlight is my thing also the other noteworthy thing is since they moved all of the mementos further back into the caves we have to assume that's a response from when Victor came there initially, they're like, okay, this is too close to where they can access. We got to move it back and protect that stuff is kind of how I was taking it. Mm -hmm. That's how I took yeah. it as well. Yeah. <clears throat> My only counter to the daylight thing is the question for you guys. Smiley, he was left out during the day. They came out um, and got him during the daytime would it not matter? Do we need to, is it something like it's, I'm thinking vampires here. You go out during the day and you start deteriorating or something. I mean, I guess it doesn't have to be like that or maybe because no. he was already dead. It didn't matter. So I wouldn't think, I wouldn't think you. it through that hard. I don't think I, he was already dead. So I don't, I wouldn't think it like it was a rule break at that point. Right. Okay. Yeah. At one point, Victor's dad posts the scare and they run out says, like her voice, her voice or something like that. I thought they yeah. were using Miranda's voice. That that voice, that voice. He's never really, I don't know. I guess he's been around the monsters, obviously, because he was in the ambulance and he had to run away with Tabby and them. But maybe he didn't. I don't, I don't know. Why would you say that? Because he's heard them talk. He. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I was wondering if they were using Miranda's voice as well, too, yeah. even though it doesn't look like Miranda. But you can't do that because how are we supposed to clock that? A voice on a different right. face that doesn't that. work. Yeah, and is, work. is Miranda's scarf there solely in that scene just to trigger Victor's dad? Or is there going to be more to it? It's probably just to trigger um, Victor's dad, but that's just worth bringing up, I guess. I think it's exactly what Victor said. I think everything in there ha was owned by other people, just mementos from the people they've killed, and Miranda's one of them. So somebody okay. owned the wheelchair at one point. Somebody had the clock, and they just take it. And again, that could be all the way back to the things that we were talking about with Smiley going on the bus. If they used to be human, you know, you might take mementos because you had a prior life as a human, and you want these attachments to the human mm -hmm. you know whatever they are clock wheelchair scarf etc what do you think the jasper story is any ideas on that just like whatever he was telling it's more lore more background well whatever he was telling christopher was right before yeah. everyone was killed so sure i don't think 
the person who hears the story is going to be on our side at the end of the day, or at least like my thoughts are that they're going to try for however many episodes to get Jasper to speak and he's not going to, and he's not going to. And I have a bad feeling that Jade's going to talk to him. Yeah. Until Jade finds himself <laughs> in the room alone with the puppet. There's also and a chance Ethan Ring. is the one that talks to him too, but yeah, probably Jade. Yeah, that's cool. So I, I, I have a, a feeling that, yeah, I mean, it, the problem is it's a ventriloquist dummy. So, again, we don't know. Victor, was he pretending? Was he visualizing the other side of the conversation? Was he hearing just Christopher's side? I do think that Jasper was speaking, but do you need some kind of connection with a human being to make Jasper actually work? Meaning Sounds Christopher's like gone. a job for Tilly. <laughs> <laughs> she can use her tarot cards and get that thing talking, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> Why not? So, yeah, I mean, maybe this thing isn't going to talk until it has a human connection again, and the human connection would be Jade. We already know he's seen Jasper in the past. The only person who's seen Jasper is technically Tabby and Victor and then Jade, but Jade's the only one who's had a vision of Jasper and have Jasper make the same noise he did when Victor saw him with Christopher. I don't think it's a good sign for our boy Jade. I'm still on the side that he's going to defeat this reincarnation theory and oh, he's yeah. going to be okay. But yeah, I think that they're going to sit around and Jasper's not going to say a word until we have some kind of connection, whether it's to, like you said, Luke, Ethan or Jasper or I'm sorry, or um, Jade. I think it's just going to sit there and it is funny. I mean, it's, it's, it's of everything that Henry's seen so far in his day. There is 12 hours. He's like, that's, that's a toy, man. That thing's not going to talk. It's like, <laughs> he just saw some freaking monsters. Like, you know, so, but I a mean, lot the Jasper, yeah, the Jasper thing, it's very telling Kathleen. You're saying like, he looks like the mob boss. He, he's sitting there with a tea party and the monsters are all sleeping around him. Like, are they protecting him? Or are they the ones that put him there and place the tea party ready to go? Does he actually not move around and they just move him around? Did Christopher bring him to the caverns before whatever happened to him after the massacre? Well, I mean, the, are you guys going to be cool with a little dummy just being like, hey, guys, what's up? Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm totally with you. There has to be something significant to get him to talk and trigger kind of that from him. I also get the feeling that since there was a living animated monster lying in wait in the cave, Jasper was cool with being taken if he is the mob boss or oh, the yeah, monsters yeah. were cool with Victor taking Jasper. So maybe there is a message that they want Jasper to deliver. So mm -hmm. I they know. want him to deliver the message to Jade that says kill everybody. And then the massacre number two happens. I, this is the whole problem with from because if Victor's the good guy and Jasper gets you answers and Jasper can help you get home, then why would the monsters let him take Jasper? You know what I never got about the Christopher massacre is like, how did brother take down like 20 people? Well, he's part he... of the massacre, but there's monsters that took him out too, because you do see okay, in the yeah, flashbacks, yeah, yeah, yeah. people were, they're inside right, the ripped ripped down and everything part, like yeah. that. So it was, it was part monsters and part Christopher, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. I think Christopher is still around in some capacity. Well, if it's not Jade. Yeah, I mean, then if the reincarnation theory is true, then Christopher would have to be dead. But I mean, yeah. there's a big thing, a big theory that he's not because Victor said, I don't have anything for Vic or for Christopher. There's no dead body for Christopher, yeah. things like that. So who knows? All right. Well, we were kind of talking about Jade. So anybody anti just moving along to Jade's bucket? Let's do it. I love that first scene of him in the bar, like, yo, Boyd, I got some stuff to show you. He starts going all in on wormholes, dimensions, but it's like, mm -hmm. I thought you said you had something serious to show me. Yeah. It's like, dude, I am serious. Like, yeah, that's the thing about wormholes. People just always misunderstand them. But <laughs> I, I mean, the thing that does finally come out is Boyd shares that, yo, I also saw one of these bottle trees and I it was a very quick scene where Jade goes to investigate the bottle tree. And then we see kind of the ghost of Tom or the vision of Tom, whatever you want to call it. I one, I love that they keep bringing Tom back because he is mm -hmm. like the light to Jade's darkness, if you will. And he was, he was giving him some good advice, wisdom. First, he tells him to sober up, but also he's just like kind of playing devil's advocate for all of Jade's kind of bad impulses that he's he's trying to act on. So I thought kind of both of those scenes were really, really good. Mm -hmm. And it also 
it was so necessary for Jay to get that information sooner rather than later because he's obsessed with the one bottle tree. Tom to just know there's another. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you guys this question. Do you take that Tom hallucination or vision as the same as Father Katri or Abby where we're saying this could be the entity because it was trying to tell him, hey, man, don't take these bottles down. I mean, how do you even know they mean anything? It could just be yeah. a random person throwing bottles up on a tree. I mean, the sober thing was actually great. Like, I mean, I think he needed that conversation if we want smart Jade, but it just seems like also the Tom was trying to tell him you're wasting your time, which I think we're going to find out he's not wasting his time. So could it be the entity mm -hmm. acting as Abby, as Father Cotri, et cetera? I think that's that sounds likely because I was attributing a lot of Boyd's conversations with his sickness, but that can't be really the same because it's too identical to Jade's experience here. So right mm -hmm. now I have no better guess than yes, it's the same it's the same spirit or essence that's talking to both Jade and uh, uh, Boyd. I, I had the same exact question written down because I felt like um, the bartender versus Father Cotri felt like he was l like leading him in a certain direction and telling him to stop doing something versus Cotri who just feels like, you know, he's being priestly and trying to, you know, actually be a devil's advocate to Boyd. Whereas this guy, I felt like he was pushing him to like stop or do something which could have like his intentions were less clear than like Cotri, which was obviously just like Boyd's own mind telling him like, are you sure about this? Feeling guilty and stuff like that. Well, is it obvious? Like, is there no chance that that what was pushing Boyd is also somehow trying to pull the puppet yeah, strings too? Totally good. But I just felt like it was Tom, the bartender. Yes. Like always just mm -hmm. going the bar. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I just felt with Tom is it, it felt a little more like, huh? Suspicious. Okay. So it's very similar to Abby. Abby was like, Hey man, don't smash that box. I don't think you need to smash that box. Why don't you chill when he, she's talking to Boyd? Yeah. Tom is doing something very similar where he's like, I don't know if you need to take these bottles down. I think it's a waste mm -hmm. of time. Katri is kind of like that, but he was also a lot more like you're saying, Kathleen, where it did seem like it was his inner conscience speaking to him, Boyd. But there were times even with Katri where he was like kind of trying to lead him in what he was going to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that Jade does push back on Tom. He's like, no, I'm not buying that. Everything means something here. And all I know about this show is that everything means something. And Jade is totally on that wavelength. The other thing, Jade says Miranda saw visions of the tree. Like that means it has to mean something. And Tom kind of, see, I don't know if this is pointing him in the right direction or trying to push him off the track, like what they were talking about earlier, but he says, how is, how is Miranda's vision of the bottle tree different from you seeing like the civil war soldiers and things like that? Cause he's drawn the comparison between Jade and Miranda's vision. But at the same time, that could just be him saying it's coincidence. It's all coincidence. It's totally chicken or the egg. You can easily yeah. argue that Miranda saw the bottle tree and then came to Frumville and then put the two bottle tree or created the two bottle trees once she got there. So if she's somebody who's quote unquote crazy seeing things before she shows, shows up in Frumville, does it actually mean anything? Or was she seeing a bottle tree that actually did exist first? You know, you know, we have no idea and that's the problem. But I do yeah. like how meta, again, we always talk about how from being meta, they're talking about wormholes and all this stuff that, that has been a huge theory for a lot of, of the fandom for a long time. So, you know, Jade which, speaking of it, which means that it's probably not the answer, right? <laughs> like it's exactly. safe to must cross that <laughs> stuff off. But yeah, the con some of the concrete information that we got here, it's through Jade's storyline about like the trees. It's not a lot, but it's something is every single tree has a corresponding message that matches up with the other tree. The one tree it's written in numbers. Numbers, the other one is written in cursive writing. That's got to yep. mean something at some level. And then, of course, what Ethan ends up pointing out later in the episode is that twos and sevens are backwards sometimes. Yep. I don't think he said every time, but that's also going to come into play. And then you can link this all together into the tabby reveal, too, as they're like talking through the bottle tree planning. It's just what we already covered was her seeing these visions of Fromville when she was a kid. It's not really related to the, to the bottle tree information, but it all comes out in this conversation. And I feel like that's the important part about the Jade scenes. I just want to confirm. Did you guys take, it was written out in cursive words or just like kind of a cursive font for words. the numbers. We okay. saw it in words. In the words. We saw gotcha. it. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. 
Someone mm-hmm. also so, dropped a screenshot in the Discord of Boyd holding up one of the pieces of paper, and it was like handwritten in words. Love right. Person. Yeah. 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 There's not much that I have here when it comes to that, except for I did a little research, and everyone knows that we have the screener, so we're pretty much giving you guys an instant reaction. We don't have time to really think about theories and things like that, but I did Google a couple things just to see if I could connect anything. The only thing that I could find was it's a start of a sentence or a story so or a start of a sentence so my thought is like is it the start of a story like are they trying to say say it is the year you know this is the year that this started for this person again the reincarnation theory you know 1978 there's the start of miranda's story or i'm sorry this would be tabby's story as the new chosen one i don't know um again the number being 20 something i forget the exact actual number that all depends on if we want to say that it could be predetermined and chosen ones could exist in the future and that would be when the next chosen one is however many years from now and it's going to be that way unless you break the cycle if we want to stick with years if, which i don't i i don't think i do either if we're sticking with years tabby and now that victor's dad is here should have all the information tabby should be able to be like wait this is the year i was born and victor's dad could be like that was the year miranda was born so like for the real yeah you know what i mean so like right, right and honestly if i was in that room and i was tabby like that's the first thing i'm looking for is my is my birth year there yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, i'm just gonna put this out there too related to the years is that i can't remember if we mentioned it briefly last podcast or if it was just a conversation that's been happening in the discord. So it's been on my mind, but somebody was saying back to last episode, when Victor's dad brings up the missing motel, what if all of the bottle numbers corresponds to quote unquote room numbers of the motel yep, and from bills, yep, yep, like yep, a yep. metaphor like almost for that. So that's just something to keep in the back of your mind. Cause then that can explain away four digits that don't need to be connected. But then the fact that they're each number is in each of the bottle trees is still going to come into play. It's just, it, it might not be years. Years almost seems impossible. And if you're going to go with Jimmy, like the predetermined things, I just don't like the idea of picking 600 years into the future, 700 years into the future. Cause I think the one was like 2746. That seems less yeah, impactful. It would have to be, than if you were have pick to be like, unlimited numbers. Right. But like, if you're going to do that, like you can make it mysterious by doing it like a hundred years in the future, like 700 yeah, no, years in the future yeah. to me feels excessive if you're going to go that route. But, that's and if it's predetermined, if it's predetermined like that, then the bottle tree should be unlimited bottles with unlimited numbers. Right. Yeah. Into the future. J. Ellis Music and Dev H in the Discord both said, "Were they motel number room numbers?" Which I love. And mm-hmm. then Girly Bot said, "As far as where the hotel is, um, or the motel from Ville could be like a Roach Motel, roaches or people get in but they can't get out, which I also really liked. Um, cool. I, like I like to think if we had some more time and we watched it twice, that I too would have thought, oh, what about motel numbers? But when they said that yeah. in the Discord, I was like, wow, yeah, that that worked. Especially in the episode where they mention the motel and we kind of ask questions about that. So I would kind of like that if it was the motel yeah. numbers. Yeah, so going back to the words being written out, the other thing that I saw and living where I am now, driving around, now you notice houses more because I just bought a house and a lot of the numbers on the houses around me, the the addresses are written out. That kind of works with motel numbers, room numbers, but not really because in a motel room, you're not going to have the number written out like that. Um, When I looked up on Google, why would numbers be written backwards? Just a random Google search. Every single search is my child is writing the numbers backwards. Our hmm. children writing it sometimes. Sure. You know, there's connection with children here. Who who knows? On um, Cooey. Um, yeah. On Cooey, baby. They look Good older. Stuff. Is, are they using the same actors, actresses? They look <laughs> a little bit older, those those yeah. on Cooey. <laughs> they should be the they same did. age. So um, the last thing I want to bring up, I feel like we have to just talk about it really quickly, is I believe it was posted on the Discord, but it is a huge theory right now on reddit and facebook because somebody kindly enough was kind enough to take victor's map the one that he you see in the shipping container slash truck whatever that is when henry and victor go to it tabby was also there with boyd as well in the very back wall you see his map of fromville and someone kind of recreated it and have has all this detail and it's pretty wild the detail that that victor uh, that um victor has on it did you guys see it at all like did you pay Mm -hmm. attention to it okay so it's freaking wild it's literally drawn out 
you know, here's the diner, here's the bottle tree, here's Colony House. I mean, there's things that, again, we talk about this with Victor. How much shit do you know, man? Because there's shit past the, you know, past Colony House this way. Past, like, there's, it goes. And there's stuff we haven't seen yet. But what's even more crazy is Victor is purposely counting how many days of sunlight there are and he has like little checks how many cloudy days are there little checks you know i guess he's checking the weather here he's also checking he's at putting arrows between the faraway trees we know that he can figure out where the faraway trees kind of go and he knows that it's a lot it's random but there's arrows to the faraway trees from one faraway tree to another location and blah 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 but there's also numbers four digit numbers so someone was saying what if it's steps because we know victor counts steps to the trees right so he's checking a few times in the show how many steps from colony house to the trees are the trees moving so is this some kind of like measure unit of measurement but they're not saying feet we're saying actual steps and maybe mm. miranda taught him that and it was miranda who started it and victor just knows it and that's how he's always done it because his mom said you know we're going to use steps you know 20 steps from now Here's the first tree, whatever it is. But there's there's a faraway tree, there's the bottle tree, and it points to the pool, things like that. I mean, there's some crazy stuff in there. So it's very cool. The steps aren't confirmed, obviously, but the map is pretty wild to look at. I love that. I didn't see that Thank at you. all. Yeah. I got to go. I got to look that up. So with regards to the numbers being a measurement system and equaling an amount of steps, that would have to mean the two bottle trees are like equidistant from every single landmark and there's like dozens of those bottles with like numbers of right steps. Which... so that would be one thing but it is kind of possible because jade made a point to say the numbers are the same on both trees but they're all on different branches like the actual layout of the bottles on the trees are different so it would mm -hmm. have to be really precise and that would be kind of a crazy coincidence but it is from bill we're talking about here I think that now that we know there's two trees and they're the same numbers, I'm out on the steps because of exactly what you said, Brian. But it yeah. is important to note that everything moves. A thing, a lot of things do move. Mm -hmm. Did the motel move? I don't know. Did the motel just get smashed like Jim and Tabby's house easily enough? Yeah. They can smash the house yeah. and knock it down just <clears> like <throat> they or the motel and knock it down just like they smashed the house at one point. There were people theorizing that the 50s, 60s costumes are because for the monsters are because they are the residents that lived in the motel. And that was during that time mm. period. They are the last residents of Fromville when, you know, I, there's a lot of stuff and it's tough to talk about it all because you'll just be talking for hours. Did mm -hmm. did you put that map in the discord or did somebody? I think somebody posted it, but I, I have a picture I can send you guys. I'll, I'll double check and see if it's in the discord. Pop cool. that guy in the Discord if it's not, because that is, I want to take a look at that. But yeah. we should be done with the bottle tree and the jade talk. Before we talk about that Tabby reveal, I kind of just want to start at the beginning of Tabby's episode mm -hmm. and maybe just run that bucket. Kathleen, you had a finger up. I know what that means. That's exactly what I was going to do. I <laughs> wanted to talk about her absolutely eating Jim up. It's so <laughs> nice to see her Tell owning Jim. It. I mean, they're having this marital spat. He's acting like he's such a good husband. And then she's like, say what you need to say. And he flips out. And we know that he wasn't even the best dad when she was gone. He's like, I had to be here for them. And she's like, you were so checked out when after Thomas. Like, I did this forever. This is my job. Like, you're just a babysitter, basically. <laughs> it was <laughs> iconic. I'm so team ta Tabby. And like, him exiting the screen for basically the rest of the episode was like bless like <laughs> hell yeah J julie and ethan not more julie like uh turns to being like a teenager again which i think is okay it's okay to see her be like a normal angsty teen again she doesn't always have to be like mature she is only 17 18 years old so it's it's fine for her to be like that and it just shifted her into smoking weed with like whoever so um I, honestly, I was just intrigued by it because I'm like, get them, eat them up. 
you know, I completely agree. And I resent Jim so much for playing the, when you, we thought you were dead. I had to be pe- like the best parent <laughs> to these two kids. When yeah. his knee jerk reaction was, I got to leave these kids right now and go head first <laughs> into the forest and put myself yeah. in yeah. danger. So like, it, it's just such a flawed argument. Exit stage, right. For the episode, Jim, thank you very much. And Correct. you said Julie was being angsty. Absolutely. But not at the expense of her being mature, because I think that yeah. was a very mature her coming down the stairs and be like i heard you guys screaming like we're not going to pretend <laughs> that didn't happen and she goes totally. julie i'm so sorry and she's like just save it i've had this conversation like 10 times before mm-hmm. like this is old news just i'm gonna go hang out with ethan i julie has been trending up and she's never yeah. really been oh, yeah. trending down so keep it going jules all rise and if you're oh. looking for somebody to defend either of the Matthews parents, not me, I'm not your guy, but I do want to talk <laughs> about Julie for a second, just to, just to throw out her storyline here. And most important, or, and to extend that to, I don't know, like the PTSD trio of Marielle, Randall mm, and Julie, like they got, to, they, they got to talk about their stuff a little bit more here. And I was worried that Randall was going to be full on. I don't care enough about, saving humanity i just want to get revenge on boyd mode where like he was just going to be mm. such an such an obstacle but i think mariel saved it i think she saved the day and i do want to put it out there that ever since she got over her withdrawal i think she's been a good character not like a great greatly a well-written character to the point where i'm like she's so she's so entertaining but i think she's like a good character in the town now so i like her and i like her and julie and randall all kind of collectively dealing with the ptsd mm-hmm. because that felt like it got dropped too easily and it was straight up horror torture that they were dealing with to the point where it would probably break most people. So I like that. Julie's been the kind of vehicle for that mix with Randall and and Marielle too. Can I say a hot take? I was like, Marielle and Randall kiss. I'm like, finally, a little bit of chemistry. On the screen. <laughs> yeah, I was like, let's do it. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm a queer girl. I'm, I'm literally a lesbian. And I'm like, dump Christy. <laughs> <laughs> well then Kenny and Christy could get back on their path. That could work for everybody. <laughs> Except the LGBTQ plus community. <laughs> but oh, I, I mean, like, I just don't see the like the they just don't do it for me. I, I go to no, other shows yeah. for that. We already talked about that. I'm mostly joking around. But I actually was like totally agree. I was fully in on these three because there's three people that would normally not really talk to each other. It's actually softening Randall a little bit. He was like Yep. being still being his dick self but like you could see when she offered the olive branch to stay there you could see him soften like he hasn't had any yeah. compassion mm-hmm. since he's been here he doesn't really deserve compassion because he chose violence from the start but he's a human just like wow. everybody else in this scary town so it's like I loved that. I think I didn't even say that in the beginning, but now that we're talking through it I was like most intrigued probably by these three especially because Julie, like talking to Randall, being like, "You want to smoke?" Like, I just love mm-hmm. that. I was like, "Sick." Same, same. <laughs> <laughs> Mix it up, baby. Let's go. Randall's definitely a tough character because Kathleen, not from the start, because from when we first meet him, he risks his life to save Tabby. He goes into that house, and it. You recall? Yeah. Or you're thinking. Oh, I see yeah, you yeah, thinking. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's yeah. true. So, yeah, yeah. but yeah, he's always. I mean, he's always been an ass, but I fully agree. I, I think that this is great because I was very worried, like Luke said, that he was going to just become this chaotic, villainous character mm-hmm. that was going to annoy me and be a problem for the town. But you're right. I saw when he says, "Like, oh, must be nice. You have someone to like curl up with at night and forget that this is crazy world." And she's like, "Do you want to stay with us?" And he's like. And he wasn't an ass. Like he literally, like in the beginning of that whole conversation, she's like, all right, let me change your bandage. He's like, what the hell do you want? You know? But when she offers the olive branch, he's like, really? I could stay. Thank you. And he didn't say thank you, but it feels nice. Kind (laughs) of nice. That that scar is so sick. It It looks way too good. Way too good. He should be Joker, man. I would love that. He should be more destroyed, but Mm -hmm. we'll see. Yeah. yeah, if I was in Fromville and I was living that life, I'd be like, give me that scar. Yeah. Let me just show you what's good with this scar. Yeah. Right. So so I got three things left written, just ultrasound, Anghui reveal, Anghui reveal, and then the Elgin stuff. So we could take any of that 
you, I, it sounds like we'll have the most to say about the Elgin theory stuff. Maybe I don't even know because it's mostly in line with what we've been expecting. So maybe let's just start there because it could be the longest conversation. But yeah, like he's just going around taking the pictures. We thought it was going to be a reveal with the Julie picture, but it turns out it's Fatima. I think everybody and their mother that's been listening to us thought the same thing as soon as Elgin snapped that picture. The weird yep. thing is that he's seeing it through the developed picture behind Fatima. Makes sense. That connects to everything we've been saying. Mm -hmm. But it's not actually there for other people to see. So it's still somehow connected to Elgin, which mm -hmm. why is he special? I have no idea. And is this the ultimate red herring like that the show's ever tried to pull where they're saying it's so obviously that it's so obvious that this person asked this phantom that I think goes on to say, help me, I can save you and help everybody get home. Like, it's so obvious that they're trying to connect it to Fatima that is it maybe not? Like, is there a world where, because we've theorized once that it was, um, who did we guess that it was? It was Victor's mom or Victor's sister. One of yeah. the two, we've we've kind of played with yeah. that, but there's no real mm -hmm. evidence outside of us just guessing. It's all pointing to Fatima. Is there any reason that any of you three have that it's not just so clearly Fatima? No, I, got I mean, that's the problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's. Like you look at, he looks at these pictures and yes, if you're the writers of from, you could just say like, oh, he looked at a picture and it's just, the, it just so happens to be the time that he sees the hallucination of Fantima and here's the skinny kimono lady. And then she shows up in person. It could have been any picture he was looking at. It just so happened to be Fatima's picture. I would hate that because it's I don't much. know that coincidental. Yeah. Like, I feel like the writers have to know that it would be assumed it was Fatima. So if it's not, and you do that, I feel like that's too much of a, yeah, yeah we got you right in your face kind of thing for no reason. But I think it's a slam dunk. I really do. There was a lot of people fighting it. A lot of people were like, Oh, just because she has the kimono and Fatima wore that at one point, it's not even the actual same kimono. It just looks similar. People were totally for it and people were totally against it just so they could fight it. But I, I mean, you show, you know, when he comes into Fromville, meaning Elgin, he asks Fatima, like, is there water around? Is there a lake around? She says, let me take you to the lake. Right. They have that moment together when she takes him to the lake. And then this phantom Fatima is trying to drown him in the tub. She has the water in her hands that are falling through her fingers. I feel like the connections are there. If yeah. you want to be wrong, if they want to say we're wrong and make it something else, fine. But I, I just feel like the connections are there. And again, yeah. we talk about this all the time. Kathleen, me and your dad, Luke, your dad, like we just know that they're very casual watchers and, and they may not have connected that. So they might've been like, Oh wow, that was crazy. It's mm -hmm. fit. It's Fatima. Holy shit. You know, like, that's how certain people watch shows. We're podcasters who find tooth comets. So we're fully, we're on the Reddit. We're on our discord. We're ready for it. So it's not a huge mm -hmm. reveal to us. Right. Can I say that after that happened and Elgin is kind of like, Whoa, baby, he looks, it's not there anymore. Guess who walks by mole watch. Yeah. This miss this bandana. Girl, man. Mole this watch. He's, a, <laughs> he's a problem, man. She's mole killing watch me. 2024 baby. <laughs> She's she is guilty. seriously just hilarious. They just give her one line per episode just to make sure you know she's there. And Luke, you said it last episode. She's literally one of the OGs that is not important, but given lines every episode. And you you are you see her every episode. Mm -hmm. yeah. She's going to die Weird. or something like there I, needs to be something for her to that do. or mole. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it, it would have made, it made sense. That. Like Nikki dying. Like if that was. The other girl, which I'm sorry, I don't know her name, but I call her the eye girl for the glass and the eye girl. That would have been more emotional, quote unquote. Like, I wouldn't have got emotional, but it would have been more sad <laughs> to the colony house if yeah. she was the one who died. I mean, why are you showing us Nikki being an ass and then she gets shot? Why wouldn't you have done it with the other girl who you've been showing us every episode who's nice except for her town hall outburst? They have yeah, a plan. They have Mount something mole. for her. Mole, yeah. mole, mole, mole. Awesome <laughs> power for you. Uh, <laughs> final thoughts on Phantoma? Are we talking about I, the no, just just the, the phantom yet, or just oh yeah, no, oh just the phantom? Okay, yeah. No, well, let's roll right into that though. Like might as well, because, yeah, because it goes hand in hand. Like the ultrasound, we, which we did talk through. I don't know. Like the mic drop reveals that there's nothing there. All of them see it, and Christy knew that at one point she was pregnant. So like the fallout from that, 
is going to be interesting. But did they they go? Is not the last thing that happens? Zella says like we got to tell them everything, and then we don't get to see that happen where they're going to tell her tell the doctors about the rotten food and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Right? We're to assume that does happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So big L for me. I'll take my L. That was hilarious. I'm like, <laughs> she's not gonna tell anybody because Alice is gonna force her. And literally, like you said, Luke, the first second, he's like, We gotta tell, we gotta tell her. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. So my question to you guys is did she tell him about the blood? I mean, it was off screen and he's kind of freaked out, but he she doesn't explicit, explicitly say on screen for us to see that she told him about the blood, which kind of would be freaking me out way more. I mean Again, spoiled food. I would, I could have the Tilly reaction if I'm Ellis, if I'm trying to make my girlfriend, wife, whatever, feel better and be like, I mean, it's food technically. So maybe, yeah. but if you say the yeah. blood thing to me, then I'd be like, oh, goodness. <laughs> like, you know, that that's a problem. Yeah. I mean, Ellis was definitely freaking out. And Boyd's reaction is very telling because he's just like, he closes the door after he walks out when they tell him and he's like, oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking she told him about the blood. But again, it wasn't shown. So I don't know. Yeah, Boyd was looking at them like you guys are so screwed like this. He was yeah. not giving them any hope. Like his <laughs> eyes screamed everything. He didn't have a poker face at all. He was like, we got to kill Fatima, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, we're going to have to send her. We're going to send her the caves. Literally. Oh, <laughs> uh, she's gonna have to go talk to Jasper. Actually, let me bring this up. This is actually from one of our friends. Uh, I don't believe she's on the Discord, but she is on um, our Instagram, and we've messaged with them a few times. And this is kind of interesting. So I have seen this before. It's uh, from the More Than Fiction Pod. Uh, she sent us some voice memos about Fa Fantima, Fatima. And it was based on our conversation from last week when I was talking about the reincarnation theory with Jade and Christopher. She was saying that she sees more of the parallels with Fatima and Christopher because of the whole scenario where Victor, when he first brings up how Christopher was, not the light of the town like Fatima, but made everybody laugh, such a nice guy. And then he sees the symbol and everything changed. And he's, is you know, we talked about the town hall where Fatima is changing right now. We're confirming that she's not pregnant. So it's not a baby that's making her change. Uh, it could still be that she's scared. We don't know, but if she's turning into a monster, that could be the change. She's saying that she sees obviously the, the, the parallels with Jade and Christopher because of the symbol and all that stuff, but she hasn't really seen Jade change the way Victor said Christopher changed, but Fatima has had a change, meaning Jade, yeah, he's getting hammered more and he's acting a little more eccentric, but he's always been the same guy. He's been an ass sometimes, but he's still acting nice when he needs to. Like this episode, he was still nice to Ethan and and he was cute with Ethan, things like that. But Fatima has had this major shift. So is it possible? Do you guys buy in that she could be maybe a reincarnation scenario with Christopher and she could end up being? I mean, we don't know. Could Christopher have turned into a monster? Was was that what the change was for him? I think the symbol thing is a huge problem for this theory. But what do you guys think? I, I think what's important to understand where is if Fatima is the Christopher reincarnation or whatever, the next iteration of Christopher like the the phantom thing is still happening like that's going to be it's not mutually exclusive because like like we right. just said there's no world where they wrote all these scenes in this season and built this up for it not to be somehow connected to fatima so if it is the if it is the true i don't know i don't know what jade's purpose becomes besides just being the guy that thinks things through i do like him being more connected to christopher because of the symbol like that seems like a more powerful piece of evidence and and parallel um just part of their per part of their stories than anything that you just brought up there but i don't hate it like that if they are going to subvert and go away from fatima being the being the phantom then they're gonna have to do something crazy like that where yes fatima is actually doing this over here so i don't i don't buy it but i i think that it's it's possible i don't buy it either and something that just occurred to me i'm not sure if we have made the connection on the pod that jade and tabby came to fromville on the same day they did yes which is like very time. much just something that will always connect them victor said early on he said the last time two cars showed up at the same time yeah. it was very special could it have been his car miranda driving with christopher 
as the other driver. With Jasper well, driving. Well, wouldn't that be something? With yeah. Jasper driving. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think it would be interesting if yeah, you can try to crazy. say to me, like, say, say, it, it hurts my heart that if if Fatima turns into Fantima because I really just want her to turn into a monster like we talked about where she lurks at night and she looks like Fatima and blah, 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 blah. But it would be interesting if you can say somehow, if this show could explain that when, if you are human and you become a monster, your soul leaves your body. Meaning if Fatima dies and becomes a monster, Christopher, if he died and became a monster, we don't see him as a monster, so I don't know. But if that's a thing... The soul left, so the soul can still be reincarnated, even though the monster version of your body is alive. Mm. That would be the only way to me that this can make sense because I just think that Fatima has her own story, trajectory to become Fantima, monster, whatever it is. But I still think it was worth talking about. I think it was a it was yeah. a cool theory, and it still easily could be true. <laughs> we don't know anything here, so mm -hmm. good to move on to our last piece here. Yeah, what else do we have? Yeah, just, it, like, is there anything to add here? She's still seeing the kids and they're still asking for her help. It looks like, and even Jay chimed in and said, like, they probably want you to help. Uh, mm -hmm. I have nothing personally. Well, are we talking about the her, her vision yet or no? Her dream? Well, I, I okay, I guess we can yeah, leave that, that in then. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Like so, on Kiwi spoons. kids don't mean anything to me at all. Just she's seeing the More. kids again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh. I think it's obviously important that she's seeing them again after she returned. They've returned to her visions, but yeah. otherwise I don't see any importance. But, um, okay, first thing is for this vision, this dream. Again, everyone listening, we're watching one time. We're watching screeners. I'm watching on my phone here. <laughs> that was Eloise. Wait. Wait, the was that little girl? That was, that was, her that was a as young Abby. Yeah, That's that was her to dream. Be Tabby as a child. Yeah, yeah. She, she said, said she when I have. was a kid, I had the same recurring dream over and over again, approaching those red rocks. Three red rocks. Okay, and the wood statues. So I okay, mm -hmm. so I thought she was seeing Eloise. Okay, so this is just supposed to be I'm a little kid in Fromville and I'm seeing myself. Okay, I thought it was supposed to be like I'm dreaming and watching something happen. All right, well, yeah, your theory's out the I, window. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't really a theory, but it was just, it was just, I, I, I'm glad that it wasn't Eloise because I would have, the fandom would have exploded with Tabby as Eloise because people were still trying to say that, which I hate. So I'm glad. Um, I think it still means the same thing to me, which is exactly what we said. I think Luke, you said it like three episodes. We need to find out three episodes ago. We need to find out if Miranda and Tabby are similar in a way where Tabby also saw visions of Fromville beforehand, which that was never confirmed until this episode. I feel like we are steps ahead so that when things are revealed, we're expecting it again. I'm dead wrong. And I thought it was, I thought it was Eloise, but at the same time, mm -hmm. it's the same end game where I, she's seeing, she's seeing visions, meaning chosen reincarnation. It's still on the table for Tabby. And what do you think the purpose of those red rocks were? Because we really only saw Jade see the one, right? Because of the snow, like the snow was covering With everything. His hand he, on it. Yeah. yeah, he wipes it off. Is it the same thing that of of uh, Miranda seeing the the bottle tree, where it's just everybody has their things that they bring to Fromville, essentially, like part of their subconscious, whether it's the fear of the cicadas or whatever. Is that this version? Like it was a recurring nightmare for her. I don't know. Like it, that's a chicken or egg situation too. Huh. Where like, is this, that's is this a fear that's been caught? That's been a nightmare layer where she gets, you know, she's in this town with these bloody rocks wow, and she sees yeah. a killer. And then that brings it to Fromville when she gets pulled in. Same They've thing. With about that. Yeah. yeah. So, that's true. Yeah. Chicken or egg. Yeah. True. Chicken yeah. or egg. That's, that's great. Luke. I love that because so much of this is things that are brought in by people in their subconscious. It could be that, everyone's having this in their subconscious because it's in from Hill Bill and they're going to end up there. But I think it's the latter. Like they bring it in. That's interesting. I didn't think of that before yeah. because since she was a kid, you're right, Jimmy, it is weird that it's not like she's seeing herself in from Bill as a kid because she was never there as a kid, quote unquote. So maybe it is like, I have recurring nightmares. I'm a sleepwalker or like whatever. I have the same exact recurring things that freak me out constantly so it's like I get the from film and all of a sudden those recurring dreams come to life, which is hell yeah. on earth. Um, yeah. That's cool. I wasn't thinking that's of it like that me, way. 
That's like me nowadays showing up in Frontville and I have to go to school and I'm and I'm late for class and I'm going <laughs> to fail my tests and all. That stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. Brian, what were you going to say? I know you had a. Uh, I know you're about to say I just needed a clarity when Jade saw the red stones. Did he physically see them? Because obviously the guy with the rod through his face yeah. was not there, but the stones were physically there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they were there. I mean, that's, we that's what we're to assume. And I'm not a theory guy. I am a commentary guy. And my commentary on this is if some crazy wacky shit doesn't happen with these stones and the wooden statues by the end of this season, I'm out. Again, I'm yeah. never actually out, but I'm out. <laughs> Mentally. Yeah. Metaphorically. So, yeah. like, the only other time we've seen stones and have them be relevant is the slabs that Jade saw the Ankui kids right. on when he went into the cave. So is this a metaphor for like these stones, the red represents the blood of the kids, yada, yada, yada. But even them, what's like the significance? I don't know. How's don't, that connected to Tabby's nightmare too? It's hard. It's hard to explain that. I just want to make what sure. What I will say... We've been talking shit on my Wi-Fi. You guys have been better than you have for the past like three episodes. So the Wi-Fi is trending up. I actually reset it today, so I'm hoping for positive returns. And it seems you were like good up until yeah, literally a minute ago. <laughs> yeah, but it's probably because yeah. I was spitting facts and they didn't want you guys to hear. <laughs> <laughs> That's That's trying to some little puppeteers. <laughs> yeah. Early Jasper yeah. was like, "Yo, dude, whoa, he's getting close." <laughs> the he's getting close. We're gonna have to fuck the Wi-Fi. That might be um, staying in the video because that was funny. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I like that. Just um, okay, so I would be remiss. I just want to talk about Donna filling up the pool with the rocks. Um, I thought she was filling the whole pool. First of all, I was like, she's going to be working on this. <laughs> oh, that would be ridiculous. Forever. Um, and it is interesting only because you're like, damn, yeah, how do we, what do we dig them out? Yeah, you got to just cover them. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um. And then the sex parties. We got to talk about sex parties. Kenny's moving to Colony House and their sex parties. Well, so, the funny thing about From has been that it's we've seen random scenes. Remember early in From, like season one, where Julie's like walking around the house and there's just random people bangity banging out of nowhere. Mm. Like that's yeah. been a thing. And yeah. it's always been weird, but they just never brought it up again. So it is kind of hilarious that they said that. I Kenny think needs that. <laughs> I think that is totally something the writers would like. Do we want to establish Colony House? Is this like really free thinking place? And then they totally decided like later on in season one, nah, we don't want that to <laughs> yeah, be like, like a oh, highlight wait. of it. Julie's and this was them here. winking to the fan base. As we've said, they're very meta. Sure. This is them saying, nah, ha, 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 we don't do that stuff anymore in Colony House. Well, <laughs> the crazy thing is if I'm remembering correctly, I'm pretty sure one of the major times where you see someone walking through a colony house and then somebody's just bangy banging in the corner on the couch is when you are they go into the next room and it's when Ethan and Julie are just like sleeping there for the first night and it's the same time where Ethan has his leg messed up and he's looking out and he sees the boy in white like it's like yo okay dude I know you're if you want to be free thinking and party yeah. or there's a freaking little kid right there why don't you chill the hell out <laughs> but um. Yeah, that was funny. And Kenny, man, why you gotta be such a square, dude? Why don't you tell Julie? I know. I mean, I know you're keep it under wrap. Like Julie. who's? Yeah, it's like who's, what, is there who's cops arresting you out? Yeah, what the hell is that? I don't like that at all. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was gonna be like, all right, let me get some. I mean, Randall yeah. ended up doing it, so it's fine. But I thought it was gonna be a funny moment for Kenny, where he's like, no, hook me up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, should have. <laughs> um, the last thing I was gonna say when it came to what you were talking about, Luke with the rocks and everything like that. It is important to note that Miranda didn't just see the bile tree. She saw the lighthouse. She saw a man in yellow. There's a lot of visions that she saw. So it could just be that they're trying to show us landmarks within Fromville. So obviously, Tabby, if she would have dreamed about the bottle tree, she would have known that and she would have said it like, holy shit. But, you know, I don't know. And we don't know what else she's seen. But the red rocks are, you know, they could just be like, oh, this is a landmark to prove that she's seen Fromville in her dreams, you know? Obviously, they're going to be important. But um, the other thing is, Brian, you're talking about like these freaking totems better mean something. The, there's so many things that should mean something by the end of this season. When I saw her open the book and she looked at the totems, obviously, there's a theory that I came out. With, well, not I, I didn't come out with. I noted it on the podcast where someone brought up the fact that the wounds match from the, the kids, the Ankui kids and the totems, the one over the eye and the one... Um, on the forehead i saw those pictures and i was like they kind of look like those on kiwi kids 
<laughs> Once, when they, we were looking at the totems, I knew they were the totems, but I literally thought that she was going to come out and be like, these look like the kids I'm seeing in a way. And that was like, she was going to make that connection right there instead of the other connection that she makes. And, right. um, she the still last could, thing though, here, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, she definitely could. That's where the conversation I mean, I thought she was going to say that the, the drawing's supposed to be great and you can see the marks. Like, I feel like she's going to say like, damn, like these kids are battered and these are the marks, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. But also the last thing, the only thing that I can think of when it came to Jade and the fact that he pulled the rod out of the totems and nothing happened in the cabins and hopefully something is going to happen from that. Jade, Brian, you brought it up and this is why I want to bring it up. Jade saw the, the sky with the rod through his eye against the tree. That was before he pulled the totem out or the rod out of the totem. When he does that to save Christy, he pulls the rod out of the totem. The next vision he sees, the guy has the rod out of his eye and now he's drinking blood from a skull. Could it be foreshadowing that you just let something loose or there's no mm. more, you know what I mean? I like like it's, the, it's just, you know, so we'll see. Yeah. And that could explain the monsters, the not monster monsters outside the cabins. Like what if a previous totem was pulled down and that that person's like trapped in that area and like messing around with the cabins. This could be another one that he just released. What what did what did Tabby see? Is it just going to be meaning when she looks up and she screams as a child? I thought it, it was could be that guy, that. too. You never know. True. Yeah. 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 So. I'm good. What else we got? We good? Yeah. All I'm going to say, expectations for next episode. Jim went to the lake, presumably with a group. They've established that it takes a day and night to go to the cabins, gather things, and come back. So I'm hoping next episode we catch up with Jim and the group in the cabins. And episode seven seems like about the time for some crazy stuff to happen over there. Also, we didn't get a lot of Kenny this episode. I'm hoping for a big Kenny episode next episode. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's all I got. Cool. Hey, Anything sarah, else? Sarah. <laughs> Wrap it up. Did you see uh, Sarah's actress with the K Sarah Sarah shirt? Mm, I that's love awesome. it. Awesome. That's yeah, awesome. I love it too. Still trending Brian, up. <laughs> Brian, you're back, baby. You're back off the lay. You're good. Um, I guess you're done saying important things. Jasper, let you back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we done here. We got everything. Yep. yep. All right. That's it for us. Episode six is in the books. Episode seven will be will be back next week. Like we've been saying, we have the screener, so we get this dropped ASAP for you guys. We don't have a lot of time to think about it, but we give you the instant reaction. If you like what you heard, check us out at BingetownTV.com or BingetownTV.com slash podcast. That will take you directly to a podcast app where you can hit that subscribe button or give us a rating if you like what you heard. Otherwise... I guess that's it. We have some important shows coming up, some big shows coming up. We want you to follow along. If you don't want to go to the website, you can literally just type in town TV on any of your favorite podcast apps and we'll be there. We're not just a front podcast for anyone listening on the front feed. We do cover so many different shows. So once again, we are Town TV and thank you so much for listening. <laughs>